a little lump thing, and it's by Dan Bryant. The setting is a sparsely furnished studio apartment. There is an old couch center stage. Next to it, stage right, is a pile of books with a clipboard and papers on top. Right behind the couch is a floor lamp, a mattress with bedclothes on the floor next to the couch stage right. The stage left of the couch, several feet away, is a table with a few utensils, part of an imagined kitchen, and an unseen door and rear. Scene one, late night, dark. Ken and Laura on mattress next to couch. Sounds of movement, and in a minute, there is the light of a cell phone screen illuminating the face of Laura in a long nightshirt, sitting now on the couch, studying the phone. Ken can be made out on the mattress, sprawled face down under the sheet. He rolls onto his back. Hmm. How was that? What? I mean, how was it for you? It was good, real good. <laughs> Doesn't uh, sound like real good. Can you help us sound? Sure you can. Fake the rest of it. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't fake it. That's your department. But stories are fake? I don't think so. Ken pulls on his boxers, walks behind the couch to the floor lamp, turns it on, comes to the front of the couch, picks up the clipboard, sits down next to Laura, and blinks at the clipboard. Didn't think you did either, things you've said. Thinking that too? I think I might have found something. Oh, hooray, but don't get too carried away about it. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> on you. On your testicle there. <laughs> down his clipboard and reaches to the fly in his shorts to feel around. Look, I don't feel anything. Which one? The left, I think. <laughs> Here, let me show you. This is kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, a little. Uh. Laura checks her phone again as Ken rearranges his shorts and reclines against the back of the couch, eyes closed. So what is that? I don't know. Maybe I'm a misfit, like my dad always said. <laughs> Your dad never said you were a misfit. Said you should have graduated is all, which I don't I, I graduated all right, just not high school. His fucking world. Pause during which Laura continues working her phone and Ken remains reclined, eyes closed, even as he speaks. Better set it for five, okay? Mitchell wants the mowers on the trucks early. He stands, stretches, returns the mattress as Laura sets alarm on her phone. She reaches back to light, watches Ken curl up on the mattress, facing away, then once he seems to be finally settled, turns off light. After studying the phone a few more moments, she turns it off in the dark. Scene two, next evening. Floor lamp on, mattress now stowed behind couch where both are sitting, dressed casually. Ken is writing on the clipboard, scratching out at times. Laura is working the phone. Semen, no. Seminova? Oh, it's a bad one. I think what can, what can kill you bad. Maybe it's not that one. It's not bothering me anyway. It doesn't have to bother you right away, at least, but you need to see a doctor, Kenny. Be sure that it won't. They can cure it now if you get it early enough. And like I said, I, I just borrow from my 401 and you pay me back when you can or not, whatever. I don't take money from my girlfriends. Oh, you have a lot of those, do you? If it's nothing, I don't need to see anybody. If it's that semi thing, you can't afford it. You know what stuff like that costs. Wait a minute, wait a minute, look at this, look at this. The government can help you, they can give you a break. Or... Uh, no, it's still too much, it's a lot. Look, like, but uh, I don't know, between us, it, uh, uh, <laughs> let's say you say it. can't sign up now, you, you'll have to wait until three months. <laughs> You can't wait three months. What are they thinking? You've got a problem. That's crazy. It wouldn't take me anyway. I already know. What? Not paying for not buying their insurance. Guess you should have, huh? Cut it out, Laura. Whose side are you on anyway? 
I was healthy. What were the odds? I didn't have that kind of money to spare anyway. Unless I'd kept up with the drugs, which maybe I should do. Greg was telling me. No, actually, no, no, no. Forget Greg. Just go to the ER. They have to see you. No, it's like it's like the law or something. Yeah, they have to bill you too, big time. They'll make adjustments. And for charity cases. I'm not gonna be a goddamn charity case. I can just hear my father. You wouldn't be a charity case. Everybody needs help sometimes. Be a nutcase, though, if you don't go somewhere and get checked. <laughs> nutcase? Good one, Lar. You are living with a literal certified nutcase. Ken goes behind the couch to pull out a mattress. Laura watches him, then gets up to help him arrange the bedclothes. He takes off his shirt and lies down under covers as Laura goes back to couch and picks up her phone. You know what your problem is? I am a nut. You are too proud, and you are too poor. And that's my fault? Of course it's not your fault, but it's a bad combination. And what I was thinking was, I bet your father would come through for you if he knew you had a problem and didn't have insurance. It isn't a charity when it's your father. You know, he only lived- Enough with the fathers, okay? Just prove him right. You haven't seen your father in what, eight years? You've got no clue what he thinks about you, about anything for that matter. It could be a whole different person, or what about your mom? You still talk to her sometimes. She, she'd speak to him, wouldn't she? Ask him to help out her son? She's too scared of him. She would just tell me to pray, like that ever helped her. Get the light, would you? Hey, if you're so interested in asking for help, why don't you ask one of your doctor pals? I don't have any doctor pals. I clean their toilets, make their beds, ask them what exactly, what should a guy do about a lump on his privates? What are they gonna say? Um, she stops as Ken suddenly stands, puts his shirt back on, and heads upstage into the shadows. Where are you going? The Greg's. He exits. Laura starts after him, but returns to couch, Stares at phone for a minute, turns it off, slams it down on seat cushion, reaches back and turns out light, dark. Scene three, next evening, late, dark. Ken and Laura, barely distinguishable on mattress. It's all right, Kenny, it happens sometimes. You're just worrying about it. All you have to do- I'm not worrying about it, okay? I just don't like being checked out all the time when we're- I love you, Kenny. All checking ever is. After a minute of faint sounds and sense of movement, the lamp light goes on, revealing Laura in her nightshirt standing by the lamp. Ken on his back on the mattress under sheet. Laura picks up phone from couch and returns to sit on the mattress. And it's not all the time. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it's a cyst. Greg had a cyst once, he said. Never saw anybody, went away on its own. Give it a month, and then if- Laura uh, taps her phone to continue searching. Then leave your damn phone out of it. It doesn't know everything, you know. Kenny? I had an idea. You did, or your phone? <coughs> I've got this insurance through the hospital, right? That I've been paying for right along, and I never use. If we're married, you'd be covered too. Families are covered. Married? Yes, yes. You know the ring thing? Well, then divorced. <laughs> if that's what you wanted. Or you, depending on what they find. What's left of me down there. Oh, but don't be ridiculous, Kenny. But why not? I add your name, you make an appointment. Wow. You don't want to marry me even to save your life. I don't want to marry you to get a friggin' doctor's appointment. It, it wouldn't be anything except to share our lives for real, you know, sickness and health, death to us part. So why aren't we married already then? You didn't ask me. In fact, as I remember, you it said- It doesn't matter what I said. That was then, everything's different all of a sudden. One thing's different for sure. And that makes everything else different. It's all connected. Okay, but it doesn't have to be. We all have. Enough, okay? You're confusing me. My goddamn nuts. And it's mine. It's your and nothing. I, it's my everything, Kenny. You are my everything. Ken grabs pillow and thrusts it at her face, forcing her down her back. She struggles as he holds her down. 
In a moment, he discards the pillow, embraces her hard. They lie there panting, hands panting close to Sami. I, I just need to know about it, is all. Before I ask you, because you'd need to know about it before you answer. There's only one thing I need to know about before I answer. So do you? Do I what? Love me. Not that obvious, no. You almost just killed me there. Of course I love you. Good. Because I have another idea. Oh, watch it, Laura. <laughs> you could just have a baby. <laughs> Jesus. Get you Medicaid. Set it right there on the thing. Baby or, or looked like disabled, they both get you covered. I, I don't know why those two things are, but. Great. Just cut off my foot and crawl on into the office. And a baby would get you covered, wouldn't it? Wouldn't help me. You should. If you're the father, your baby as much as mine might need to check that, though. It gets awful complicated when you start getting into it. Well, yeah, and how are they going to know it's mine, anyway? I'll tell them. <laughs> you know, the Army, they look after their soldiers. Walter Reed and all that. Be quicker, probably. And a job, and no kid. And I wouldn't have to stay in just long enough to. I don't know. Get shot? <laughs> Get another chance to die in your 20s? And would they take you, Kenny? What with what you got? That's the thing, isn't it? I don't even know what I've got. And it costs more than I'll ever see just to know what the hell I've got, never mind do anything about it. Laura watches him for a moment, slowly shaking her head, then turns off the light. Dark. Scene four. Been morning the next day. Light on, mattress behind couch. Ken sitting on the couch, dressed but with fly open. He is feeling around inside. <laughs> Sound of door opening, and from upstage, Laura enters jauntily with bag of groceries. Whoops! She sets a bag down on the table and makes point of not looking at Ken as he zips up and picks up the board. She starts putting groceries away under the table. He finally turns to me. Ah, I ran into Amino at the co-op. Her kid is as cute as a button. Eight months, I don't know how she can stand to leave her and, and go to work, peds, take care of other people's kids, ought to be able to take care of her own kids, don't you think, if you're lucky enough to have them? Mm. Like, have your daycare there at the hospital, could go be with the kid on the break, that'd be good. Oh, oh, I got, I got, I got you these beef jerkies. Do you want one? They had two for. Probably should have gotten more, but I. I'm not I, hungry. So what are you up to on your day off? Well, we're going to the park, uh, work on that story. That'd be good. When would you be doing that? You think? Aren't you supposed to say, uh, don't you have something more important to work on, less fake? <laughs> Giving you a day off. I'll make you a sandwich before you go. Got some of that sliced chicken you like. Oh, uh, I'm not hungry, remember? <laughs> well, I am. You could sit with me at least. Ken picks up the clipboard, studies it while Laura starts to make sandwich on top of the table. How's it going, by the way? Been better. Story ending. Uh, I, I love the part where the sniper. I, I'm gonna move, Laura. Move? What do you mean, move? Move out! Why? What if, what if I... Canada. Greg says that they take care of everybody up there. You can come if you want. I'd like that, actually. I really would, but I know you... Well, of uh... course I would. I, I'd want to come, but that's crazy, Kenny. By the time we found work, place to live, got through the paperwork, and you must be have to be like a citizen or something, wouldn't you? How, how long do you think that would take? You never think my ideas are any good. Notice how that works? Mine haven't been that great either so far. Maybe there are no good ideas for this kind of thing. Maybe you just go with the bad one because that's all there's out. That's all that's out there. A bunch of bad ideas for how to get well. I'm gonna finish my sandwich. You sure you don't want one? Laura finishes making her sandwich, returns to the couch with it, and begins to eat, chewing slowly. From time to time, she glances over at Ken, who is staring into space. 
What do you think, Jason? God can make a lump on your nuts. Why can't he make a way to get it fixed? Why is that so hard? God, Anthony. I'm getting religion like your mother. Ken suddenly stands. Wait, Kenny, wait. I, I'm still eating. She stands. How about reading me the story while I finish? I love to hear you read stuff. I might even have a suggestion. Remember the one I really liked about the little boy and the mouse, wasn't it? I said that if the mouse had his own family, like, like the boys when he tried. Kenny! Ken is making for the door at the rear, leaving clipboard behind. Laura overtakes and grabs him. Kenny, wait, please! Ken struggles to free himself. Knock sounds. He freezes. Laura breaks away and hurries into the shadows upstage. Sound of door opening, her muffled voice. In a moment, she returns into the light. It's your father, Kenny. Can you believe it? Well, let him in. Light goes out on its own, dark, blackout, end of play.